The Tribal Community Coordinating Center has been funded since 2019, which is the year that COVID hit. And so a lot of our tribal projects who were funded in the state of California were asked to do community engagement and outreach during a time when everybody was shutting down. The event today that we hosted is our statewide showcase, um, which is highlighting the work that we started in March of this year with the Learning Institute, bringing people together to bring skills into the tribal communities to help them get work done. And now we actually get the opportunity to meet our tribal partners in person. And it's just incredible. It's amazing. And we get to do in-person work again, which is vital to building up our communities from the ground up. Many of the people that joined yesterday and today are new and it's the first time that they've had an opportunity to meet each other. They get to come together and network and build up those resources that they aren't even aware of because they're all working in their own tribal communities. Traditional tobacco is very different. We use that in our ceremonial practices. We use that in our prayers, a self-healing for for myself and our communities. And at one point, it was exploited and taken from us and used against us. Generations of people in our family have smoked. It was kind of the rite of passage back in the day. They could smoke in cars, in the house. 95% of the people that smoke have come back to say they wish they never started. So hopefully we can get that message out. People will never start. It wasn't until recently that I seen tobacco as commercial tobacco. Once I started my role about a year and a half ago, I kind of seen the impact that commercial tobacco has and its prominence in Native communities. Personally, I smoked for 34 years and I quit in 2007. So I have a really good idea of what it takes to quit. You know, when somebody goes from three packs of cigarettes to, you know, a half a pack, that's huge. You know, and it takes eight to 12 times in average for somebody to quit smoking long term. So it starts with, you know, trying to get to a place where quitting looks feasible. There is smokeless tobacco, there's vaping, there's um, just a lot of information around commercial tobacco and how it's affecting our communities. Especially our youth are targeted and they're wanting new smokers. So they're needing our youth to be their replacement smokers. And an aspiration of mine would be to, uh, for one, just try to reduce it because, you know, I have kids of my own and, you know, um, I have a lot of family who are younger than me and I just don't want to see them get consumed by, you know what I mean, these products that are available to them. One year, I think it was maybe two years ago, we were able to bring a couple of our youth here to the state capitol mm -hmm. and uh, we were able to be part of the youth program here and then they made these cool no smoking signs, they're campaigning. They were so proud of holding their posters and, uh, we marched with them, we walked with them, we took pictures, and we went all the way to the state capitol. We were able to ask some questions to some high officials, and it was pretty cool to see them involved, you know? Getting to know the kids, getting to know the elders from the coalitions, getting to know the youth from the coalitions, from our tag group, and then the personalities, and just finding a way to get everybody to kind of be on the same page. We had some success just getting our tribal council on board with passing a no smoking in-home policy. Having the support of tribal council makes the world go round, truly. Um, that, that is how we get these things passed. And then also we were able to create a Tobacco Times news article for our youth and our membership to, to be able to read about how our practices were used with the, their traditional tobacco for the ceremonies, how they smoked it out of the pipe and we're able to make an actual 30 second video that we're able to run in our local movie theater. 
We had some really amazing billboards encouraging our clients to be commercial tobacco free. It's, it's a summer summit that, that we all collaborate together. Youth participate, youth present, uh, we present, we have uh, members of the community in all the different communities, the outreach, people show up, we make a day of it. Every year our numbers have gone up uh, and creating a coalition is something we're pretty proud of. So being in this space, it's, it's really valuable because a lot of times in our work, we feel alone. Um, and tobacco control work is sometimes kind of lonely. There's a lot of uh, hardships, I would say, and a lot of losses that turn into lessons learned. And so when we're in this environment with each other, we're able to connect and feel a sense of community that we don't always get to feel when we're working in our own individual locations. So I think that connection and community is just really valuable for us. So we want to fill our community up with the right creativeness and inspire our next generation so that they're not sitting there hopeless or without the right resources because they're out there. It just takes the right people to, to gather and coordinate those things.